Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Mama Angel's Kitchen. And this is Soul Food Sunday. And I've got a treat for us tonight. I am doing the best homemade baked macaroni and cheese you've ever had. All right, strap yourself in. We're going to get started. Let's go into the ingredients we need tonight. It's not a whole lot. It may look like it, but it really isn't. I'm going to start out with our cheeses because, you know, it's macaroni and cheese. In this bowl here, I have grated. There's four different cheeses here. I have got extra sharp cheddar. I have smoked Gouda. I've got regular Gouda. And then there is um, Munster. Okay, I've grated all these up myself. I started with a eight ounce block and I've used half of the eight ounce block of each of them. So there's four ounces of each one of these cheeses. And then I have here, again, eight four ounces, and this is Kobe Jack cheese, and I've just kind of cubed that up, okay? And I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. And I've got them all, hopefully somewhat the same size, okay? But I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. Then we're gonna need some butter. And the liquid, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not done with the cheeses, I'm going too fast. I have a can, of uh, this is nacho cheese, Fiesta nacho cheese, Campbell's style. This is optional. If you don't wanna use this, you can't find it. Just use um, a little bit of Velveeta, okay? This is in place of Velveeta. Sometimes I use Velveeta, but sometimes it's just so much easier to go ahead and use it in the can. Um, and I find these, you don't have to use the nacho cheese brand. I get this in cheddar cheese. They have it in all kind of different cheeses right here in the can. Okay. And then I have some softened cream cheese is what this is. All right. That's our cheeses. Then we're going to need some heavy whipping cream. Another interesting one. This is uh, carnation cream. So, you know, kind of get in the can. When I use some in the can, I just pour it in a little mason, 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 there we go. Get it out, girl. A mason jar, and I put it in the refrigerator. I find that it stores better that way, okay? And then I have maybe about a quarter cup of some of that pasta water. After your pasta boils and it's done, reserve about a quarter cup of that pasta water, and I'll show you why. This here is just a glass of regular water. And I'm going to turn it into um, chicken sauce, chicken stock, or chicken broth, whichever one you want to call it. Let's just take that off. I don't buy the, um, I'm going to go with, that's probably about a tablespoon uh, to, this is not even a full eight ounces. So this is probably about six ounces of water and a tablespoon of the Maggie Pollo. And guys, that's how I make my, my chicken broth anymore, okay? I use the Maggie Pollo in water, or I use the Better Than Bouillon and water. And I just put it in here and stir it. I like doing it that way because I can control the strength. Depending on what I'm making, I may want it stronger or not, and the true reason is, why buy that when I always have Maggie Pollo or Better Than Bouillon on hand, okay? The other thing we're going to need, of course, is the elbow macaroni. Uh, this is a 16-ounce bottle box, and I have used the entire box. Whether or not I will use all the noodles, we'll see how that goes, okay? I have already cooked my noodles. They're sitting over there by the stove waiting on the sauce to be ready, and then we'll put them in there. I have cooked those. This box says to go nine to 11 minutes. I went about nine minutes. So anywhere between seven and nine minutes. You want to go a little bit shy. You want them done. You want them al dente, but just a little shy of where you would actually eat them at because this is going to go into the oven. Okay. Uh, if I mentioned it, we do need butter. I think I did say that. 
the spices we're going to use is Maggie Pollo, some Sazon, some paprika, onion, and garlic powder, salt and pepper. Okay, that is our ingredients, guys. I'm going to meet you over at the stove and we're going to get started making this sauce. All right, be back. All right, guys, welcome back. We're over here at the stove and I have my skillet heated. And I forgot to tell you, we are going to need a little bit of flour. That's what the butter is for. We're going to be making a roux. So I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon of butter. Okay. And the skillet is nice and hot, so I'm going to take it off of the, the eye and let that butter cool it down because I don't really want to make brown butter. Not that it matters much, but that's just not my goal. So I'm going to let it melt over here. Um, and that's all I'm doing. See, just letting it melt. I'm going to go ahead and get some flour in there. And you want equal parts fat, which tonight our fat we're using is butter. So equal parts fat to equal parts flour. And that's that scoop right there is probably about a good tablespoon, about even Stevens right there. All right, you get in there and you mix that around and just cook that until, turn that fire down, that's what the problem is. Fire's way too hot. Um, get that cooking. Just stir that around until you get going to cook that raw flavor out of the flour. Sorry guys, I got a little distracted here because I did not intend to have my fire quite that high and my butter turn brown on me. But if that happens, all is not lost as long as it's not burned. Brown butter is a beautiful thing to cook with. Um, it just turns a real nutty flavor and so it's a nice deep rich flavor and absolutely nothing wrong with it um just wasn't what i was aiming for tonight that's all <laughs> all right and you know if you watch a lot of cooking channels you'll see that they you know if they're making a cajun dish um then you'll want a nice you know, they, they will cook their roux a lot longer until it gets a nice caramel color like this is. Okay? So, it just brings out a deeper, richer flavor. No problem. It really is no problem. If you start your cheese sauce out like this. Okay? I'm not going to let it go any deeper than that, though, but it smells so good. It smells so good. I do want to make a... A Creole dish one day you know I you know I do like shrimp and grits the easy stuff um, I want to do like an etouffee or a gumbo I've made a gumbo before maybe once or twice in my entire life um, and I just love it I do love it so you know maybe we'll experiment together here on the channel and um, Turn my hand and making another one. All right, this here is the chicken broth. And I'm gonna switch to my whisk. All right, and again, let's get that fire. I don't want it out of control. So that's why I keep turning it down. And right now I've got it on a low until I can, I'll, you know, I'll keep adjusting it as need be. Is, I'll be honest, what happened is I was run, walking around and doing other things while I was heating up my, my skillet. And by the time I got back to the skillet and you guys, it was hotter than I necessarily wanted it to be. So all I'm doing now is cooling it down by turning the fire down and working with the liquids in here until I get it where I want it. Okay, that's all I'm doing. All right. And I may want a little bit more 
liquid. And if I do, I'll just make that liquid water. Okay. I want this here, not a real thick consistency. Okay. It can kind of get a, a look see what we've got going here. Okay. All right, I'm going to use the rest of that. And this comes together really quick, guys. It really does. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more water in my glass while that's tame. Let's not leave that like that. You don't ever want to leave your roux unattended. <laughs> Never leave your roux unattended. All right, guys. I hope you are having a, hope you have had so far an amazing Sunday. It is 6 o'clock Sunday evening. I have... Watch my games. Both of my teams won today. Well, I didn't watch the Bucks, but I follow them on my phone. They turn this fire up a little bit more. I want this to bubble, not too much. They won. They played over in London, I believe it is today. Uh, so I kind of watched them in between, <laughs> in between church service, um, and then. I did get home in time to watch the, yeah, come on baby, boil up. I've let my fire, or I let my, um, my room cool off too much. So, you know, you just get in there and you play with it, guys. You play with your heat. Um, I don't want this to cook so fast that uh, it thickens up on me so much that I can't control it. But obviously, I don't want it cooking so slow because I got a lot more to add to it. Okay, but I got home enough time to watch. I know I want more water. Just a little bit. Okay, so I started with about six ounces of water. I've gone in with about two more ounces. Um, and so probably about eight, eight ounces of water. And that's because I'm making a good amount of cheese sauce. I want this... Super, super, super creamy and cheesy. All right. All right, let's bring that up to a little bit more. I want a good boil on this. Okay. There we go. Come on, little darling. Yep, I've let it cool off more than I want it. And it's being stubborn now. I tell you, I cooled it off too much, and now it doesn't want to come back up to a boil. <laughs> but it will. It will. Don't worry. I just don't want to put too much in there now because it'll start to bring down the temperature even more, and I want that temperature up. So while I'm waiting on that, what I'm going to do is let's put in some seasonings that I know we're going to want in there. Okay, let's put a little bit of pepper, and these are just pinches couple of pinches of pepper. One pinch of salt. Go real mild on the salt because there was salt in the chicken broth. There's salt in your cheese. Okay, You can always come back and adjust your salt. So you don't want to go too heavy on that. There we go. Now you're boiling. This is a little bit of onion powder. A little bit of garlic powder. Whisk. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. As I was saying, I got home in time to watch half of the Chiefs game. That was a good game. They won. So I'm happy today. So, if you guys watch football and your team was on, I hope they won. And then you had a really good day. If not, you know, there's always next week if they play next week. 
All right, guys, we're going to go in with some cream cheese. And this is about half of an eight ounce block, okay? When I open a block, especially when it, if it's not already in a container, you get the kind that are in the, the paper and the box, then I store mine in a box, in a, you know, little container like this. It keeps it from drying out, okay? So I'm using about four ounces of that cream cheese. And I just break it apart like that because it's going to melt better. Okay. Right. Go back in with my spoon. Just fire just a little bit more. And you will, when you're making a cheese sauce or like this here, you're often gonna have to, you know, keep adjusting your fire. And that's okay. You know, just keep an eye on it. This is not something you're ever gonna walk away from. Okay? Not something you're ever gonna walk away from. All right. All right, I'm gonna open up my cheese sauce. And this again is where you will use Velveeta if you don't wanna use the can. Or, you know what, guys, even if you are against processed cheese, like the Velveeta, leave it out. Still a beautiful cheese sauce without it. I make it without it often, okay? I have to admit, I do like it with, with it just because it just offers another level of creaminess. Now, with this, you can see he's got the pimentos and little peppers and stuff running through there. So that's just gonna be fun. It's gonna be just another sort of little dimension of flavor. Um, and I'm not confident yet if I'm gonna use the whole thing. I just start with half a can, and then I work my way up to however much of it I wanna use. And if I don't use it all, guess what? I put it in a container, and I use it for something else later. We, um, our church today, we meet in smaller groups a couple of times a month. And so our small group, we met today and we went to a park. It was so absolutely beautiful. Kids can go and play at the park and we could sit there and talk and share and fellowship and you know with Thanksgiving coming up we talked about things that we're grateful for and you know having a grateful heart and I am sincerely grateful for my channel and grateful for you guys there's so many other things I am totally grateful for in life. I am an amazingly blessed person. No complaints about my life, I tell you. And that doesn't mean my life is perfect, not by any means. But I am truly blessed. All right, guys, let's go in with some heavy whipping cream. And as you see, I'm sorry, I do not measure. <laughs> I don't measure, but... Um, that's it right there. I think I may have gone in with a quarter cup, maybe, maybe a quarter cup. I'm going to go in a little bit more. Okay. And I'm just looking at my consistency, guys. And then once I get that consistency, I'm going to go and taste it, of course. This I'm going to go in now with a little bit of that cream, that carnation cream. I know, evaporated milk, that's what it's called. I was trying to remember what it's called, evaporated milk, okay? It just gives such a, it's another level and a depth of flavor that you're just gonna, not gonna get from milk or even your heavy whipping cream. Um, and I just, I love building flavors. And I gotta tell you guys, have you watched, if you have not watched the last, um, Soul Food Sunday recipe that I did. I think I did that one two Sundays ago. 
for the collard greens and the potato salad. That was a little bit of a longer video, but my goodness, people are loving it. They're just loving it. And I am loving that. I am so grateful that people are enjoying it. Um, and I really, really hope that people are trying it. Um, it's increasing their skills on cooking meals like that. Because that's my goal. Is I know I love watching. This here is the pasta water. Okay, And I'm not going to use a whole lot of that. But I'm going to tell you what the pasta water does. Anytime you make any type of sauce, whether it's a red sauce, a cheese sauce, um, any type of sauce for pasta, add you a little bit of that pasta water in there. There's flavor in that pasta water, for one, because you should always salt your pasta water. Not only do I salt my pasta water, I also put um, garlic powder in it. So it is flavorful. But then it has the starch from the pasta in it. And what that starch does is it helps your sauce to cling to your pasta. Okay? All right. Uh, I can tell you now, I want this to be a little bit more. That's good. That's looking good. But I'm going to go ahead with the rest of the Fiesta cheese sauce. And what I'm judging now, guys, is I want to build enough sauce to use all or at least most of my elbow noodles. Um, and I want it extra creamy. Okay. So I'm going to go in with a little bit more heavy whipping cream. And all I'm doing right now is I'm building the amount of cream sauce, of my cheese sauce, rather, okay? My consistency is pretty much where I want it, but the amount isn't. So I'm just building them out. And then I'll go in with my shredded cheese once I have it up to an amount that I'm comfortable with. All right. Okay. And I'm hoping... I'm not going over too much, but there's nothing else to see once I get done with this part. And I want you guys to see this part because this is the important part. This is the macaroni and cheese. Once you get this part done and you add the noodles in, pour it into a dish, you know, you're, you're good to go. Um, okay, I tell you what, just so my video isn't so, so long. I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna bring it back when I'm ready to put in the uh, shredded cheese. And I'm just about there. All right, guys, welcome back, welcome back. Here we go, all right. And what I have done while you were on pause, I added the rest of that cream cheese. I added the Sazon, which I did not show you guys that, but I did put, you know, a nice little shake of Sazon in there and some more of the evaporated milk and a little bit of water that's where we are now you'll see see that consistency it's pretty watery and that's where i want it because i have not put cheese in there yet the shredded cheese and that's going to thicken it up as you remember it's going in the oven so i don't want it overly thicky i want it creamy i also added some more garlic and some more onion powder so let's give this a taste. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That is good. I'm going to hit it with a little pepper. Okay. And that Fiesta cheese, not spicy at all, guys. Not at all. It just gives another depth of flavor that's just delish. Okay. Let's bring our cheeses into play here. And I'm mixing them all up, all four of those cheeses. And I believe that smoked Gouda, well, I've used it before. Okay, down with the fire. Real, real, real low with your fire to almost off, okay? 
and then just go in with handfuls of cheese and you know, don't do like I did all over your stove. That's gonna be not fun to clean up. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. That has become my new favorite saying, guys. It is what it is. And um for me it's such a a place of surrender, you know? Don't sweat the small stuff. It is what it is. All right, here we go. See how it's starting to thicken up and okay. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of this for the top, okay? So not all of it's gonna go in here. And that cheese is melting beautifully on my stove top. <laughs> Just beautifully. All right, guys. Let me tell you what, I hope you guys are having as much fun watching these videos as I am having while making them. You know, it's my daughter talked to me into starting this channel a little over a year ago. Um, and I told her, I said, I'll tell you what, once a week you can film me cooking dinner. And that's how I got started. And, you know, life happened and I stopped making them for about a year or so and just recently started back up with the videos you guys have been seeing. And I tell you, I'm almost addicted. I almost want to do one every day, but <laughs> truthfully guys, I don't cook every day. Um, yeah, but I think that, I think that's good. I think that's the consistency I want. And there's quite a bit left for the top because I like I like that nice cheese on the top. I don't want a heavy uh, layer on the top, but yeah, I think that's good. So turn off the fire at this point. Turn it off, and I'm gonna bring the noodles into play. And they've just been sitting there in the colander on the pot so that they can drip down in there. And what I do here, guys, is I just add the noodles right in, right on in here. Okay. Yes, my hands are good and clean. Okay. I do believe we just may use all of this. Oh, boy. Yep, we are nowhere near even questioning it yet. Okay, and just keep stirring it in. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring you guys back once I have it at the consistency that I want, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay? Okay, guys, welcome back. Here we go. And this is what we're looking like. I did stop just a little bit shy, so it's probably... You know, a good handful that I was putting in there that's left there that I did not use. Um, now, if you want to go ahead and use all of yours, all you do is what I'm about to do now. I'm going to add a little bit of water because it's still a little bit thicker than I want it to go into the oven. Okay, I want that creaminess going in the oven. And so this is how you do that to get it stretched. And just remember, the more water you use, the more you're compromising your flavor, okay? So, either add a little bit more seasoning, depending on how much water you use. I'm not overly concerned about too much of my flavor just yet, because I am gonna go in with some of that pasta water. I'm gonna give it a stir with my finger there, because it does start to settle. Your starch and seasonings will start to settle. That's all I'm doing is working this through until I get it at a nice consistency that I want it at before I put it in the oven, okay? I'm going to play with this just for a little bit, and I'll be back and show you exactly where I want it. All right, guys, here we go. I got it where I want it. Take a look at this. See that creaminess? 
That's what you're wanting right there. Okay? You're wanting that kind of creaminess. Hope you can see that. That looks good. That looks real good. Okay, what I did is I went in with a little bit more, you know, of the water, both waters, the pasta water, regular water, and a little bit more of the evaporated milk. I didn't do any more of the heavy whipping cream because that will thicken. I wasn't trying to thicken it. I wanted to thin it but keep it creamy, okay? All right, here's the container we're going to work with this in. And then I did add some more seasoning. I put a little bit more pepper. Um, and that's because I, I love pepper. And then I put a little bit more garlic and onion powder. Nothing else with salt in it, okay? All right. And I'm going to do half a layer here. That's good. That's good. Spread that out. And then those beautiful little cubes. Can you see that? Beautiful little cubes of cheese. I'm gonna nestle them right down in there. Okay. So that's gonna give us a beautiful little cheese pull. And, you know, I just love a macaroni and cheese when you bite down in there and you get an unexpected little clump of cheese. But, I mean, you know, I'm, I just, I love cheese. It, it's just not a whole lot of ways that you can give me cheese that I'm not going to be happy with it. All right, I guess I'll stop right there. That's pretty cheesy. Oh, look like a beer spot right there. <laughs> okay. And now, on with the rest of it, okay? All right, guys, I've got my oven heating at 380 degrees. And this is gonna bake only about 15 to 20 minutes, just until the cheese is nice and bubbly and the cheese on top is a beautiful, beautiful brown, okay? Let me show you how we put that cheese on top. Let's go here and try to get a nice layer all the way around first. And then, if I have extra cheese left over, I go back and thicken different areas. Okay? Man, oh man, this is going to be good, y'all. So, Food Sunday. Now take me back to my roots, I tell you. Which I'm having absolute fun with. Okay, got the cheese in. Get that beautiful color. A little bit of paprika. Just a little bit. You don't want to go heavy. Just a little bit though. You're just going to give it that nice little red tint. All right, into the oven. 380 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. I'll let you know how long it took when it came out. Alrighty. All right, guys, welcome back. Take a look at it. This rascal is beautiful. It took about 20 minutes in the oven to get it here. All right, I'm gonna go in here and see if I can't get us a cheese pull out of this. That's my goal tonight. Try and get us a beautiful cheese pull out of here. Ah, oh, let's see. Can we do it? Oh, it is creamy. Look at that. But it's trying to get away from me. Let's look here. Let's see. Did we get one? Oh, almost. Look at that. Look at the creaminess on that, guys. You see how creamy that is? All right. Oh, man. Look down in there. Look at that. There's my pool. <laughs> there it is. All right, guys, let me finish making a plate. I'll meet you over at the counter, and we'll give this a taste. All right, be back. All right, guys, welcome back. Here it is. Here it is. Full meal. Let me give you the round view. There's that mac and cheese. And, of course, I made with it some fried chicken, some green beans. This is a soul food Sunday meal. Yes, it is. If you like this video, 
give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, come on, join in. I see several new subscribers that have come on board. Welcome, thank you for your support. I hope you are having as much fun as I am having. I'm gonna keep them coming. These are meals that we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. So your mac and cheese, you definitely want on that, on your table. So once you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload one of these amazing videos, okay? Let's go ahead and give this mac and cheese a try. I want to get that crusty top right there. That is my favorite. Oh, look at that. Do you see that? Oh, my word. It's the cheese pull for me, y'all. It's the cheese pull. Come on. Get a good shot at that. Ooh. Look at that. Yeah. Mm. Mm. One of my best, without a doubt, y'all. This is crazy good. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one right here, guys, and finish my meal. I promise you everything on here is, <laughs> it's good. Mac and cheese is a star, okay? Put this one on your Thanksgiving table. Give this one a try, guys, just like I did it. Leave me a comment, let me know what you thought about this if you made this, all right? I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Stay prayed up. See you in the next video.